They said they'd put down a vote of no confidence, then they said they wouldn't, then they said they would, then they did it but it wasn't effective. I know it's the Christmas season and the pantomime season, but what do we see from the Labour front bench and the right honourable gentleman? He's going to put a confidence vote. Oh yes he is. Oh no he isn't. I've got some, I've got some news for him. I've got some advice for the right honourable gentleman. Look behind you. You may not have seen during the exchanges in Prime Minister's questions that when the Leader of the Opposition sat down, he muttered words which were quite clearly visible, accusing the Prime Minister of being a stupid woman. Bearing, bearing, Bearing in mind, Mr Speaker, the booklet that you issued this week, the words that the Leader of the Opposition said last September, would it not be appropriate for him to come back in the chamber and apologise? I'm pleased to respond to the Right Honourable Gentleman's point of order. As he rightly surmised at the start of it, I saw no such thing. I am not making an allegation and I am not denying or seeking to refute that of the Right Honourable Gentleman. I cannot be expected to pronounce upon that which I did not see and which was not witnessed by my advisers and which I did not hear and which was not witnessed by my advisers. What order? I don't need any advice in how to respond to a point of order from the Right Honourable Gentleman, which is what I am doing. What I say in response, with all courtesy to the Right Honourable Gentleman, who is perfectly entitled to have raised that point of order is that it is in order it is incumbent upon all members of this house to operate in accordance with its best conventions and to follow the conventions and courtesies if a member has failed to do so that member has a responsibility to apologize he is quite right to say that what he cannot and i'm sure does not expect me to do is to pronounce a verdict in a circumstance which I did not witness, either in terms of seeing anything or of hearing anything, and neither did my advisers. And I will leave it there. And, and it's perfectly order. Order. It is perfectly proper that the Right Honourable Gentleman raise the matter. I have responded to it, and there can be no further to that point of order, because I have order. There can be no further to that point of order on that matter, on that matter, for the simple reason, as he acknowledges with his nod of assent, that he's raised it with me and I have responded to it. Uh, Is it on an unrelated matter? No, no, I've already... No, no, I've already... No, no. I'm not going to take lectures from members. I will order. I will take. It is normal convention in this place that when a matter has been addressed, again, part of the conventions and courtesies of this House, that people recognise that you don't have repeat points of order on exactly the order on exactly on exactly the. You don't have. You don't have repeat. You don't have repeat points of order on exactly. It's order on it on exact. Every week we do on exactly the same matter. Order. I order. I am perfectly prepared to take a point of order on the matter from the leader of the house. We have order. We have we have heavy business today some of which is government statements and with which we will, in due course, preferably reasonably soon, need to proceed. But I will happily take the Right Honourable Lady's point of order.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would just like to ask, um, after your um, finding there, that individuals who are found to have made unwelcome remarks should apologise. Why it is that when an opposition member found that you had called me a stupid woman, you did not apologise in this chamber? No, 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 no. Yes, exactly. no, no. I'll deal with the point. that matter months ago in remarks that I made to the House of Commons, to which the Right Honourable Lady in our various meetings since has made no reference and which requires from the Chair today no elaboration whatsoever. She's asked the question. I dealt with it months ago. I've reiterated the rationale for the way in which I responded. The matter has been treated of, and I am leaving it there. And if there are a, a point of order, Anna Subri. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. With great respect to the Chair, I have to say this. If it was one of my male colleagues on this side of the House yes, yes. that had used that expression against a woman on the front bench on the opposition, then you, sir, would take action immediately. Yes. Please, would you deal with it, as you often do, Mr Speaker, in a fair way, but also from the point of view of women in this House who are fed up over decades of being abused by men? Very happy. I'm very Yes, I'm very happy to deal with it. The Right Honourable Lady is absolutely right to say that if I witnessed an instance of the kind that has just been alleged, I would deprecate it unreservedly. It's no good people shaking their heads. I received assent to the proposition, which I think would command widespread assent, simply and logically, that I cannot be expected to deprecate the behaviour of an individual which I did not witness. In order, if the, if the Right Honourable Lady, if the Right Honourable Lady, if the Right Honourable Lady, if the Right Honourable Lady is asking me whether I deprecate without reservation the use of such language, yes, obviously, absolutely I do, without any hesitation. But I cannot be expected to pronounce judgment in a particular case on a given individual when I wasn't privy to the circumstances. But if she's asking me, is that language unacceptable? It is. No, she's... Very well. One more round, Seabury. If I and other colleagues, who I can see the phones, clearly the evidence exists. If we bring it to you within the next, what, two minutes, would you then, Mr Speaker, take action? Because, again, I make the point, if it was a male on this side, I think you would against a woman on the other side. The, 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 answer, the, answer, is that, the answer is that, it, it, forgive me, but it is incumbent upon a member who has erred, who has used inappropriate language and behaved improperly, to come to the House, order to come to the House. It is incumbent upon that person, or it is incumbent upon that person to recognise the misconduct and to apologise for it. If mem order, if members order, if members produce what they regard as evidence, of course it is reorder. If members produce what they regard as evidence, it is order. If members produce what they... Order, I'm in the middle of... Res no, what I say to the honourable gentleman, the member for Braintree, is please have the courtesy to allow me to respond to the right honourable lady's point of order. If evidence is produced, it will be considered, and I will take professional advice, as fair-minded people would expect me to do. Uh, no, uh, point of order, point of order, Vicky Ford. Mr Speaker, could you confirm that it is not acceptable parliamentary language to call a woman a stupid woman in this House, and as regards the point of order from the Leader of the House, may I add the words, me too? Uh, the answer is, I have already made the response to that point perfectly clear. So, there is, forgive me, I, 
treat the honourable lady with courtesy and respect, and she is perfectly entitled to raise a point of order. But of that point, of that point, I have already treated. I have already treated. Point of order, James Cleverley. In the leaflet you distributed, you make the point very rightly that we are all honourable members. Our word is therefore evidence. I saw it, sir. I saw him say it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, all I order, I order. I'm not order. I order. I am not seeking to refute what the honourable gentleman is saying. I am order. I am simply saying I didn't witness it. The clerk of the house and the other clerks at the table didn't witness it. And I order. And I cannot be. I'm sorry. I cannot be expected. I cannot be expected immediately order. It's no good somebody waving something at me. I cannot be expected immediately to pronounce guilt or innocence. No, no, I can't be expected immediately to pronounce. I can't be expected. What I, what I, what I reiterate, what I reiterate to the honourable, what I reiterate, what I reiterate to the order, I'll deal with it in a moment, what I reiterate to the honourable gentleman is that members are responsible for their own conduct and should apologise if they have committed a misdemeanour. It's no good a member standing by the chair and trying to show me something. I would say, I would say, I would say, I would say, what I say, what I say to the honourable gentleman is that order, what I say to the honourable gentleman is that the leader of the opposition will have heard of the allegations that have been made. And if, yes, and if the... And if the, he will have heard the allegations and order and order and if the order, if the right honourable gentleman, in the light of those, chose to come to the House and to respond, I'm sure that would be appreciated by the House. I'm sure it would be appreciated by the House.